Hey, this is the video for Impact One. So go ahead and set up a new entry in your Cornell notes. Remember to start a new page for this video. Also check out our essential vocabulary. Today we'll be discussing invasive species. Uh, also, I've included this little image uh, with the acronym HIPCO. Remember that HIPCO are all of the contributors to biodiversity loss. Whenever we're responding to a question prompt, we don't like to say that something is bad for the environment or it harms the environment or bad for the planet. These are generic terms. We want to say that it contributes to biodiversity loss. It's saying the same thing, but it sounds more scholarly and you'll get points for it. So factors that are contributing to biodiversity loss are all of the letters of HIPCO, habitat loss or habitat destruction, invasive species, pollution, climate change, and overharvesting. Today we're talking about uh, invasive species, but looking at the human population over time, the human population has been very steady since uh, the domestication of, of plants basically and, and producing agricultural crops. So for the last 10,000 years, or for the you know 10,000 years, it was pretty steady. And then it's been slowly creeping up, especially since the Industrial Revolution. That enabled us to uh, explore the world. It enabled us to produce much more food for ourselves. Technology has really increased the amount of uh, people and the, the transportation. It's just basically done a lot, and that has enabled the population to exponentially increase. Uh, we, are, we don't know what the carrying capacity is of the planet. Uh, definitely, we're, we're definitely above 7 billion right now. This is from 2000. Um, but the population is still going up. Scientists are not sure whether the carrying capacity of the Earth is 8, 9, or 12 billion. Um, they don't expect it to be much more than 12 billion, although never say never. So one thing, invasive species are a non-native species that will rapidly increase in a population and they will outcompete native species. Invasive is something that is invading, much like a, a, a colonizer, an explorer, uh, but an invasive species, they don't have natural predators. They did where they originally came from, but they don't necessarily where they are moving to. That makes them highly competitive. And because they are successful at competition, they have high levels of fitness and favorable adaptations, and that allows for a rapid population increase. When they increase in their population, they're taking resources away from native species that might be a little bit more sensitive. So I'm gonna give you some examples. Um, basically, the examples that we have in and around New York or the United States, we have zebra mussels. Zebra mussels uh, have contributed to, uh, contributed to the reduction of nutrients in waterways, but a blessing is they've also cleaned the waterways. In fact, zebra mussels have been very instrumental in cleaning the waters around New York, um, but they are highly invasive and they take away from other organisms that are beneficial. Uh, pythons in Florida. Somebody years ago decided to, you know, get rid of their python in their backyard and now pythons are found in the F Florida Everglades and they are eating the natural alligator population. So if you ever wondered who'd win in an alligator and a python, pythons are winning. Cane toads. Uh, cane toads were brought into Australia. Uh, to help with a certain type of beetle that was infecting their sugar cane and the cane toads didn't eat the beetles, they ate everything else. Also cane toads are toxic, they secrete a venom. So if a dog licks a cane toad, if a dog eats a cane toad, your dog, your pet could die. Cane toads are found in areas of Florida in the United States, but we don't have cane toads up here in New York yet. Another invasive species in aquatic ecosystems is purple loosestrife. Uh, purple loosestrife occurs upstate New York. Uh, where I'm from in Minnesota, we had a lot of purple loosestrife that was very invasive. It looks really pretty, but it is very, um, it's very easily spread and it, it grows in aquatic ecosystems. Uh, one that is very big in the news right now is the spotted lanternfly. The spotted lanternfly is very t uh, harmful to uh, other organisms in the ecosystem. It is damaging to crops and to plants and you, they're very noticeable. I saw one just the other day and I stomped on it. If you see one, kill them immediately. They're, they're invading New York and New Jersey. Uh, and finally, the Asian longhorn beetle. 
this is one I haven't seen one in New York but you see signs posted um, they get into the trees they burrow in the trees and they can they can kill trees and they are very highly invasive so I just gave you a lot of information the invasive species that I mentioned are not the only ones there are lots of invasive species um, but you should understand the concept not necessarily the content uh, please take a moment to respond to this check for understanding. I hope that this video was informative. I thank you for your attention. I will see you soon.